guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. Welcome back to Win Phil Zoo, our franchise mode project that we have going on right now. And if you missed it, so last episode, do a little bit of a recap here. We got our moose in, we moved our reindeer over here. And then last Sunday, we did stream a little bit. And I don't actually think we ended up really touching anything over here. I mean, we kind of finished like the cave entrance for the cougar but I spent most of the time, uh, look, the Arctic foxes have a roof. We are not going to continue the Tali Zoo tradition of leaving everything un roofed. So we have a roof on our Arctic fox habitat. Therefore, this one is pretty much done. Um, I, I think they're doing okay. I think as far as space goes, they might need a little bit more room or it might starting to be uh, tight, but that is because they've had babies. You can see we've got quite a few in here. So we may need to go through and figure out who's related to who. But I also kind of finished off their little pool area here so you can see we have a nice little looks like it's all concreted in right little pool here with some rocks on the side and a little drain down there looking pretty good now that's what we did last time and on the stream this time what i think i want to do i have thought really hard about this situation right here and what I think I want to do, because if you can see 17 uh, welfare issues, now some of these are these guys, which is fine, but we are still having problems with stress with the pronghorn antelope, uh, or no, yes, the pronghorn, uh, and the moose habitat here is really only big enough for one moose. Now, I don't wanna do this in today's episode because I wanna run this by you guys and see what your feedback is, but my thought is actually to get rid of these guys. Um, no more bison, no more pronghorn because they're just, they're too stressy or option two would be to keep the bison and move the follow deer over here. Moving the follow deer would be um, in any case, moving the follow deer either with the bison or without the bison over here. And then being able to combine these two habitats like I was talking about for the moose. And that way we can have two and hopefully some babies, of course, cause that's, you know, babies are cute and we want those. Or option number three, uh, two, that was option number one. So option number one is empty out this habitat, put the follow deer over here, follow deer either by themselves or with the bison, and then combine this and have the moose over here. Or option two being that we maybe just rehome the pronghorn antelope and we keep everybody as is and we only have one male moose. Maybe the story is he's a rescue or something like that. We just won't get any baby moose. Um, so let me know. Option one, option two. Let me know what you think. Uh, the only ones in this little circle right now that aren't causing any problems, like I said, are the little ibex, which I think is great. At least they're happy over here. Now, as far as today's episode, I do want to add another animal. You guys had wonderful suggestions of bears, um, monkeys, um, I think there was one more and now I'm totally forgetting. But before we get to that, cause I'm sure you already know what it is seeing the uh, the thumbnail. Cause I will of course have used it for the thumbnail. Let's go ahead and check on these guys. And I am not unpausing it until we figure out what the heck is going on with them. Uh, there are 17 of them. That's what's going on with them. So let's keep a male and a female and move all of you guys to the trade center. There we go, perfect. And let's check on you guys as well. Yep, there is a ton of you guys. So male and female email everybody else to the trade center. This is going to give us a good chunk of change, I think, but it's not like we really even need it. Yeah. $5,000 for them. Okay, great. Perfect. Now let's see that actually, oh, that was the majority of them. Welfare has attracted protesters. Well, actually is that, oh, that's the wrong button. I'm hitting Jurassic World Evolution 2 buttons to speed up time and hit play and all that kind of stuff. But that should that should take care of everything. Perfect. So my other thought was actually, let's move, actually let's delete this because it's not even the right color. Let's grab this one here and put it right next to the ATM, right? Get some money out, put it in the donation bin. There we go. I'm actually going to move this one. 
hopefully. Uh, let's see, can I grab the building? Let's edit this and let's grab you and split you split you from the group and that way I can move you by yourself. And if I scooched you over right next to there, perfect. I wanna do another path right here. Uh oh, why why is this escapade? Who is escapade? Um, you're not a scop aid. Why? That's very annoying. Is that gonna be a bug that stays with us for a while? Because, I mean, clearly it's not escaped. That research is complete, so that's good. Let's see what we got there. Bison, fantastic, even though we might be getting rid of them. Um, but anyway, I wanna do another path right here because I wanna try to lessen the congestion. So let's actually widen this a little bit. And can I get it to, I really wanna try to get it where it's not gonna break the corner right there. We can go, actually, you know, we can probably just go straight, straight across from the corner is probably a good idea. Let me see, can we get you right so that you're going straight across? There we go, perfect. So now, when we eventually complete this kind of entrance area, I have, honestly, I've been putting it off and I know, um, but I haven't really had the inspiration that I think I need in order to make it really pretty. So that's why I've kind of just left it for now. Um, I am gonna put some plants though, because plants make everything better. Um, just that way it looks like it's a little planted. I kind of want this to be, um, not fully covered right here, but maybe covered in the back. Oh, and I wanna delete that uh, path as well because I don't want people accessing it from the back and it doesn't need to be connected in the middle. So that is perfect, there we go. So I want it to be kind of covered um, from the back. So you do have to walk around in order to view it, but hopefully that will solve some of our walking problems. Maybe some of the guests that wanna come in and go straight this way won't quite go that way. And you guys let me know that because I forgot our facilities are on the inside of here, these bathrooms are far too close. And I don't know if, oh, okay, well, that's good. Can I? Let's move you over here and delete that path because I want to see if, if, let's actually just see how far the negative um, effect area is. Ooh, it's, it's quite far. It's quite far, but the path ends right there. We might be able to just, like, just get away with it. So let's see. Let's see if we can get away with that. No, I want the whole group. Are you guys not in the whole group? There we go, whole group. I want both of you at the same time. And actually, if we kind of put them over kind of off-centered, maybe we can get the path. Why is the path? That was a stupid question. I was about to ask, why is the path gonna be so difficult? Whoopsies, that's a dumb question. It's because it's path and it's always difficult. I shouldn't ask such dumb things. Let's see, will you both connect, please? Because that would be fantastic. If I put you there, are you going to be in the negative, I don't think so. In the negative zone, that corner, I don't I don't think when they go in, it's gonna have an effect quite that far into the corner. So let me grab the path here and see. Oh, of course not. Of course not. Why would that want to work? Um, get you out of this group and... Eh. Okay, well. Maybe we, maybe we put you there. That's gonna be in the negative though, isn't it? Let's see. Sorry guys, brand new episode. Uh, whole half of the episode is bathroom struggles. Sounds a lot worse than it could be, I guess. All right, let's see. Go, oh, sorry, I deleted that path. Somebody go to the bathroom and let me see if you turn, if you turn red. Come on, surely somebody has to go to the bathroom. Hello, there we go. Oh, dang it. They're red for like a split second. Okay, and I can't get them any closer probably, huh? Probably not. Oh, I oh I can. Oh, okay, hold on. That's still connected. Oh, good night. Let's see, does that work? Oh yes, that, oh, if that doesn't work. If that doesn't work, uh, that should work. 
that it's like barely touching. There we go. Went in blue, came out blue. Fantastic. That's what we want. Why is another animal escapade? Oh, that's vet research. Yeah, see, it like pops up for a second. And the only thing it's going to affect, I think, is if an animal escapes, like the pop-up happens right when we're having an inspection, that's going to be rather annoying because then the inspector is going to think um, that we've let an animal escape. Did I ever put sleeping stuff in here? I didn't, so I need to. Let's do that. Um, Where am I going? Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. There we go put that right there and then another one right here to encourage them to go to sleep in there and then whoa hello camera that's what I'm talking about like the mouse all of the sudden sometimes it just like flies across the map and I I really I truly don't understand why I don't understand why it does that because I haven't changed any of my mouse settings or anything like that so I wouldn't imagine that it would be much different than um than how I had it before okay Perfect. All righty. So as far as an enclosure here, oh, Cougar had an offspring or is going to have an offspring. Where's the baby? Where's your baby? No, you're not having it yet. Oh, hello. Sorry. That's my phone. <laughs> oh my goodness. I totally forgot that they have spots. I totally forgot that they come out all spotty. Oh, she's a cute little girl. Hello. I love their faces. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bummer that she only had one though. It'd be kind of cool if she had two. What is your name? Sacagawea? Is that is that really how you spell that? I know that name, but I don't think I've ever seen it spelled. Very cool. I'm going to keep that name. I think that's a cool name. Cool name for a cougar. Okay, more vet research. Perfect, so it looks like we're getting back on top of this, which is nice. So snow leopard research is awesome. Let me just turn my phone off real quick so we don't get any more disturbances because it distracts me. Um, and I need to focus on what we're doing right now. Uh, low welfare, why? Why, why, why? Is it a space thing? It is a space thing. It's because you're stuck on that again. You guys, franchise mode, really giving me a hard time with these little bugs and things. Can I move? It might be because he's trying to use that and getting stuck. So maybe if we move it off the rock a little bit, because now, yeah, you're good with space. Fantastic. But again, we have a oh, low welfare uh, attracted pro why it attracted protesters so quickly. And then you guys have low welfare. Pretty sure it's because of stress. So, you know what? What if... What if we change some of these panels, some of these panels to, to wall? So if we do this, and we kind of... I'm gonna do this real quickly just for like proof of concept kind of thing. If we make this a wall... I want to raise this up because I only want to use two pieces. I want to be conservative on our piece count in this game, in this zoo. So if we raise this up and there's, that's one wall, obviously, of course, this needs to come and move and we can actually probably just put it on the wall, right? So on the wall there. And now they have to view from here, which is fine. And then if we go over here and we make, Maybe we make these two, the two center ones or the two outside ones wall. Maybe the two outside ones. Let's see, let's do this and raise, can I have this wall and this wall? Raise these up like that and then all the way up. And let's see if that looks dumb. I mean, it's not, it's not ideal, but I don't necessarily think it looks, I don't think it looks dumb. You guys can tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't think it looks too terrible. I do, however, want to stop the Z fighting because that's going to drive me insane. So let's go over here and just pull in out real quick. That's what she said. Sorry. <laughs> 
go over here and make sure the Z fighting is gone. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think that looks bad. Will it make a difference? I don't know. Let's see. Will these guests stop viewing from here? If we speed up time, let's see if the crowd changes at all. No, they're still... They're still... Okay, they're not viewing from there. Will anybody else walk up? Wow, actually, did that just, like, really work? Because, look, we only have this one little group here, this one little group here. That might have solved our problems. That might have solved our problems. Let's see, are they stressed out anymore? Are you guys about to play? Oh, I love this animation so much. The one like sneaks up and then kind of sniffs and, and snuggles with the chin and rolls over on the back. It's such a cute animation. Yeah, so space and stress is all 100%. They're all good. You do need more toy enrichment though. So that is something I can fix right now. Let's say fox, 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 fox. We need toys. Um, oh, we have the little log unlocked. Let's go ahead and give you a little log. How about right there? No, I don't like that. Let's, <laughs> let's rotate it a little bit like that. There we go. There we go. You have a little log. Now, does that make you happy? Species toy enrichment is still not very high. Okay, well, how about a tennis ball? I think you might already have tennis balls in there. That didn't help either. Uh-oh, is there toy enrichment? If they already have a, a tennis ball, I know that's not going to help. Where is this thing? Because is this the Skittle feeder? Might be. The Skittle Feeder's food, so that doesn't count. What about this thingy? I don't... Oh, the bubble thingy. Oh, I can't put it there. I can put it there, though. Oh, and flatten my entire terrain. Oh, well. Let's see. Did that help you? Can I click on you? Uh, okay, that helped. Perfect. Great. That works. Let's get out of this and see what else is happening. Dangerous fighting for alpha status. On who? Is it going to be the pronghorn antelope again? Did our baby grow up? Did our baby grow up or was it the baby bison grew up? I don't think it was the bison. Let's look, uh, let's look in our animals. Oh, hello. Oh, more vet research. Fantastic. Let's go to animals and sort by species, which it already was. Yeah, our bison has not grown up, so it's got to be the pronghorn. Let's see. Where are we? Pronghorn antelope. This one, Watkins is the alpha. You and you are his children. Ooh, and his, um, his female babies grew up. So you guys are the children. Let's go ahead and send you to the trade center. Yes, please. And then let's see, where is, there you go. Watkins, who is your child? Fargo, Sophia. Did I not send Fargo to the trade center? I meant to. Can I click on you? You're right here. Oh, okay, you're going. You just, for some reason, went slower. <laughs> uh, but Sophia is his daughter, and Sophia needs to be on contraceptives. Contraceptives. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So that, that takes care of that. Okay, one more notification, vet research. It is, oh, for the pronghorn antelope, look at that. And these guys, I mean, I didn't check, but they look happy. So maybe, maybe it's okay with this thing. We'll see, we'll see. Cause now that I'm gonna say everybody's okay and we don't have to change anything, then something chaotic is gonna happen. Okay, what do we want to do as far as new animal? Let's go ahead and take a look at the Zoopedia here. We're looking for an alpine animal. Um, I'm wanting one... Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about gray wolves and arctic wolves. That could be kind of cool. So that's definitely on the top of my list. Gray wolf, arctic wolf. Um, somebody did suggest clouded leopard, which I don't think is a bad idea, but I don't want to add them just yet. 
For some reason, I was thinking about adding these guys, even though they're totally not an alpine species. The lynx would fit, but again, I don't want to do a cat. <gasps> badger. What if we did badger? Okay, possibility. Black bear is also a possibility. Um, but I think the brown bear might fit in a little bit better if we're talking about bear species. Either the brown bear or the grizzly bear. Although the grizzly bear would be kind of a bigger habitat, right? Where are you? You need, oh, I guess not, not too much. Not too much. Honestly, I don't really have any idea about making a bear habitat. I honestly don't have any inspiration on anything. You know what? We could do a macaque habitat. We could totally do a Japanese macaque habitat. I don't think I've ever built for these guys. I don't think I've ever built for them. Let's... Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Because what we can do is maybe I'll put them kind of branching off this way. And it's about... We can start like a backstage building over here. Maybe, actually, maybe a backstage building over here that can kind of branch off into like the Japanese macaques and maybe some other primate or something like that. Or, oh God, I almost said lemur. Can you imagine? Um, and then we can kind of branch off this way and it'll kind of be on the edge of this wall. So I'll kind of make this creep up against the path a little bit, make some rocks there and everything. I think that might be, I think that might be a good idea. Well, I don't think we're going to get completely finished this time, but we're going to get it started. Now, in keeping true with what I said in last episode, I am going to do this in real time because I do want to keep a combination of real time building and also um, speed builds. So this will be kind of heading down to the canyon area down here and we'll start a little building. For some reason, I really want it to be a circular building. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on that. So I just actually finished building uh, something for Mr. S. Dan, uh, which you will be seeing sometime very soon. I don't think you'll see it yet. However, uh, I bring it up because I am now inspired to build kind of a lower budget mesh kind of enclosure. Um, what am I searching for? Mud pillar is what I want because I'm thinking if we put like a circular habitat here, that would be kind of a good breakaway point for like over here. And I want the enclosure to be circular with kind of it cut off on one side. And that way that will be like the building kind of thing. So if we get into here and we search for my very favorite, um, actually I think they're called rods, uh, very favorite pieces from the Australia pack. These things are fantastic, but actually first what I need before I do that is I'm going to need a wall. And this is actually, I mean, very quick tutorial on how I do, um, circular symmetry stuff, uh, is I'll use the walls to kind of mark out the even spot on either side. So I think, I think that will be okay. Um, as far as space goes, maybe if we move it over here and we move it one more out, cause I don't, I don't want these to be too small or the, the habitat to be too small rather. But if I do that, that's going to be huge. Cause these monkeys are not very big. So let's actually get back in, back in like that. Let's go back to the Zoopedia. Am I still on the Japanese macaque? I am. Yeah. They only need 300 square feet. Okay. That's perfect. So this will be a good size habitat. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the rod piece from the Australia pack. And I do want, I do want the small one. I'm just kind of looking and seeing how, how that is comparative to a, a human. Um, I'm gonna put this right on the corner here so that it is in the center of the mud pillar, at least it should be. And on the inside of this wall, because hopefully if I'm doing this right, it'll be embarrassing if I'm not. Yeah, so that should go right through the center of the mud pillar. And hopefully if I'm doing this right, 
uh, we will be able to rotate this completely. If you can, uh, maybe I'll test it and just see if I duplicate this and move it around like that. And then I should be able to, let me get rid of that real quick. We're going to undo all of this. This is just a tester, just a tester. Oh, you know what though? Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, I remember because I normally use not a gridded piece. So I'm not going to test it. We're going to wing it and see if it works out. So I want, I actually want this rod to be, uh, maybe we'll do in the middle of this one here. Yes. And then I can take them both and grab it and bring it, line it up here. And that way, this new space that I just made with these rods is in the center of the mud pillar. Cause remember these two were in the center when I slid it over here. So now this whole thing is kind of centered with here. And hopefully when I duplicate this, cause this is not gonna be a part of the build at all. So we can actually get rid of that now. Cause that was just spacing. Um, hopefully that will, uh, that'll be in the middle of our, of our mud pillar. And when we rotate it around, it'll match up. So I think I'm going to stick with the chain link fence pieces because they just kind of look a little bit more old school than like the metal pieces. So I want that to be there. I also want these to be okay. Maybe I'm going to have to select these before I select the, the fence. Um, not that dark, not that light either. Let's go into actually that might be a good color. That's a little too brown. So let's bring it over here. There we go. That's perfect. I wanted it to be a little dark, but not, not like not brown in color. Um, go back to rod is what we need. This, by the way, you guys is probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode because this does actually take uh, a while. You guys are kind of used to me building in uh, speed builds and not necessarily in uh in real time so hopefully you guys do enjoy kind of getting to see see a little bit more of the real time stuff um and hopefully i can continue to to speak while i build because sometimes sometimes building and speaking does not always work out now um what i think i want to do hmm let me think about this. What I think I want to do is I think I want to do the roof later. So don't yell at me, but I'm going to put that over there because I need the spacing to be able to make a roof that matches this. But what we can do right now is just duplicate this and this will kind of be the barrier for our habitat again, because I don't really want to make this an entire like two hour video. Um, so we'll do that. And that's going to be good. We'll probably cut it off like one more panel and then it'll just go straight across. But now what we need to do is we need to delete all of these on the inside. And by the way, if I wasn't planning on doing the roof separate, I would still put that over there. It's kind of like a save. So I put that over there just in case I mess up. I can go back to my original. If I do things that that move this around too much and I end up losing the ability to undo, that's a really helpful thing to have. So if I can just grab this and bring it to meet in the middle, I'm okay with it being double um, double on the poles on the, the vertical poles. In fact, I kind of want that cause I kind of want them to seem a little bit thicker. Let's move this around and see how well, uh, not well, I can already tell <laughs> we're going to have to do some finagling to get it to work. Right. Because this is not lining up exactly right, but that's okay because that's a relatively easy thing to fix. So I think I will leave it like that because this is all this is all one group. Remember, I want to delete all of these, get that all away, get that all away. Um, this, ooh, that's kind of a problem, though, because 
So actually, oh, actually, why am I doing it the hard way? Let's just do it this way. So let's delete that. That's going to be the back of the building. And I can probably delete one more of these just to bring it up a little bit because I don't want this habitat to be super big. We want it to kind of just be enough for the macaque. So that will be the backstage building. We'll go like across here and probably not all of it too. I'll probably build the building just like this. So if we take one of these, oopsies, I did not mean to delete that. If we take one of these and I hate that you can't see it selected from far away, <laughs> take one of those and let's duplicate this and then rotate it so that it is that way. Perfect. And then bring this over and we'll probably just do two panels like this. Yeah, I think two panels will be good enough. That way it's not this massive building because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to be this massive building. And of course, you're not going to line up. You're going to make me work for it. Going to make me work for it. Oh, and I did want to apologize to you guys for this being I know it is uh, like a day late. Why is this not lining up? Did I do it off the wrong? Did I do it off the wrong one? Oh, it's not rotated enough. That's why. That's okay. That's an easy fix. Um, yeah, it's a day late. Um, I'm actually working on a little project that I'm not ready to reveal yet. And little project in that it's not really a new video. It's kind of a new, bigger project. Um, so I haven't, haven't got that done just yet. I'm not really quite ready to announce it, but I will be soon. Uh, but that's part of why this video is a day late. The other part of it was uh, Mr. Banana and I went to uh, Disneyland two days ago when you're seeing this. We went on Thursday. And we had the best time. I actually haven't been to Disneyland in, in a little while. We had the trip planned uh, before I recently uh, lost my job and we decided that we were gonna keep our reservations that we made. And we actually, impressively enough, we did an entire day at Disneyland and we only spent uh, $36. <laughs> we spent $36 because $30 is for parking. And can you, first of all, let's talk about that. Can you believe that? When I first started going to Disneyland, um, like regularly as an annual pass holder, it was $15. Yes, it actually might have even been $12, but it was $15, we'll say. So it has in five years doubled in price. $30 just to park your car is is a bit insane it's it's a bit insane and i they get away with it because you don't really have any other choice you kind of have to like you drive there you've got to leave your car somewhere right so they just that's what they charge and uh i think it's i think it is a bit insane but um but yeah anyway we did that and then we bought like one snack it was like a little bag of candies like little chocolate thingies and a um and a diet coke <laughs> And that was, that was it. So, but as far as a Disneyland trip goes, that I was rather impressed with myself um, in being able to restrain. Normally I go there and I'm the one that wants like, oh my gosh, look at that shirt. I need it in like four colors. And then, oh my gosh, look at that water bottle. I don't have a water bottle like that. I must have it because it came from Disney. Like I'm, I'm terrible with that kind of stuff, but I restrained, I was good. And oops, I needed to like actually click and not right click on that. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It wasn't that busy, which was nice. The only bummer thing was, is that we had to wait an hour and a half to ride Rise of the Resistance which for you guys that don't know is the new kind of Star Wars ride in Galaxy's Edge. Highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite rides because um, it's very well done, but uh, an hour and a half because you can either spend like $40 or something like that for a lightning lane. And that's $40 for like one ride on it for two people. It's $20 a person, which is a bit ridiculous. Um, or you can just wait in the normal standby line. And so obviously that's what we ended up doing. Uh, a bit expensive, like I said, so we skipped it and, uh, but very much don't regret doing that because I, I love that ride. <laughs> I love that ride so much. Um, so maybe we keep in the theming 
Maybe we keep in the theming of the... Let's go to the wall section here. Let me just check my time real quick. I want to make sure... Okay, we're only at about 30 minutes or so into the episode. I don't want to go over too, too much. But let's just go grab some of this stone so that we keep it... Not that one, please. Nobody wants the gridded pieces. We want the non-gridded pieces because those are much, much easier to work with. And I'm going to level this to the top. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to level this a little bit higher because I want the building a little bit higher. This is not the final height. That is a really tall height for a Japanese macaque. It does not need to be that tall. So we're going to bring this whole structure over to the guests in just a second to use them as a scale. I just like when I first start building something, here's another little tip since we're talking about building and building in real time. Um, I like building on the world grid first and then adjusting to the whatever, you know, area that I need this to be in. So that being said, like I bring this out and I don't change it. Whatever orientation this is in, I start building on the world grid just makes it a whole lot easier for me. And then once I get kind of the general thing done, then we can click the wrong buttons. Don't do that. We can bring this over and we can lower this to like right yeah, right here, I think is good. Cause we still want it to be like, we want it to be a little bit taller, maybe a lot of it taller. So maybe like that is good. Cause again, the roof actually, again, I don't think I even mentioned this, the roof I want to be kind of domed up into the center. Um, so I'm gonna have to get creative with that, which is one of the reasons why I'm choosing just to do the perimeter of this so far. And then let's get it all situated. I. I think I want it to be, I think I kind of want it to be back a little bit and we can have a path go around on either side. So then let's grab our paths. I um, guess we can stick with the same path, but if we do a path here, am I going to get this to meet up? I guess that's kind of nice. If I do it on this side, are you going to, I don't want you to be that long goodness um yeah you know what that's not bad because then we can uh not angle snap you then we can come along the edge of the habitat like so and go around to wherever this path is going to go and we can make this we can make this kind of like when you first walk up, maybe we'll put a little sign that says like Japanese macaques or something like that and like donated by whoever donated it or something. Um, and we could do we could do that right there. Um, I do want to give this ground a little bit of, of variation, not that much variation. So I want this to kind of be low in the front because that's where I want their pool to be. So let's see that water. Ooh, um, let's raise it up just a smidgen. That's not a smidgen. Thank you, though. Let's lower you down a little bit of a smidgen up. And that way I can kind of raise all this around the edge and we can make the water a little bit like I want it to be right, right up to the edge um, of where my terrain is down. But I want it to not be completely level kind of like the issue that we ran into with the fox so there we go i want the ground to go up just a little bit because we are going to make this a concreted pool just like we did for the arctic foxes um let's get rid of the long grass because everybody hates long grass and actually it's bothering me it always bothers me when we do um uh grass inside of the ponds and stuff. I don't know why. It just, even if it's short grass, it just looks silly. So I don't like it. Um, but there we go. We do a combination of stone and come back. I was not done with you. That let's lower this down and bring this up just a bit in the back. Most of the decoration of their habitat is going to be rocks and climbing stuff, but I do want it to have just a little bit of variation in the turf uh, terrain as well and that way we get a little bit of more interesting habitat there we go that's coming along that's coming along a little bit now let's double check before we get too far into this let's go ahead and throw a barrier on here 
let's line you up. I kind of want the door to be away from that path just so it gives us, well, maybe not that far because that's where the hill is. Gives us a little bit of wiggle room and let's do right where, there we go. I want the frame of it to pop through just a little bit. That way I can see where the door is and I don't kind of lose track. I'm gonna bring this like outside of this habitat just so that we have tons of room to work with. Bring you all the way around. I love that the null path can go on the paths or the null fences can go on the paths, it's great. Can you connect please? Thank you. And then we'll get rid of this because we do not want the brick. There we go, beautiful. Look at that, you guys. In what, 15 minutes we have this done? Fantastic. Um, I say that kind of sarcastically because we really don't have anything done. Let's do this and look at what kind of climbing structures are already in place for monkeys. This one's not bad and we can kind of put that so that it's actually I'm going to raise it just a little bit and we'll kind of put it so that it goes to the edge of the water right there. That's pretty good. Let's I kind of want to lower this just a little bit. I don't want to go crazy on climbing structures just yet because I don't know like how tall the roof is going to make it. Um, but that's that's OK right there. And maybe one more i think there's like yeah this kind of thing there's like one that is not um doesn't have any platforms on it it's just a uh, just logs and so let's see if we can get this to connect up somewhat nicely to maybe the edge let's go back this way a little bit maybe the edge right there maybe the corner there we go beautiful okay awesome now if we connect up the path Let's make you a lot smaller because you don't need to be this massive path for them and grab you right here and connect you like that. Great. That way we can still continue off there. That is all connected. Should we? I know this is very ugly, but I want to actually get the monkeys in so I can click on their little thing and bring up the foliage that they like. Uh, animal trading. We want Japanese. Cack right there. Perfect. Ooh, look at him. Uh, let's try to save our conservation credits. So you are not bad, but your immunity is terrible. You are also really old. Um, you're on the older side too. Well, you are going to be our female of choice. Yeah, I think so because you're the only one that we can buy for money. And as far as male goes, you're from the Frontier Zoo, so we're okay. Oh, well, duh, the money ones are always from Frontier Zoo. So we're okay buying either of these ones. Should we... 11 years old. These guys are all... You're the youngest, though. <sighs> you know what? Let's just go... Uh, wait, wasn't there one? Yeah, you. Let's go with you because you're the same-ish age. And hopefully that'll be okay. Also, how many do you like? Can just two of you is fine? Um, mm, okay. So eight to 50. So two, it doesn't go up by much. 340, okay. So maybe, can you refresh? Did we get any more? Maybe we can do four of them since they do like to be together. So there's another male who's 10 years old and another female that's 11 years old. Okay, cool. Let's grab you guys. Where'd you go? There we go. It's the first time I've ever put these guys in a zoo. Sent to zoo. Delivery scheduled. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and speed up time. Yeah, and like I said, I think this is a good, I'm really trying to keep like loops in mind for this zoo. So obviously we have this big hoofstock loop. We have this big uh, cat loop so far, and this will kind of be leveled out and continue on out that way. And then now we're starting a primate loop, I guess. So that was, that was actually unintentional for them to be all matching kinds of animals, but here they come. Ta-da! Hopefully, please be happy. Please don't escape right away. 
<laughs> Give me time to click on you. Okay. Um, space. Insufficient area or crowding. Ooh. Ooh. How much uh, traversable area do you have? Mm, not that much. We might, let's just make their water a little bit on the smaller side since I know they technically don't need it. I mean, they need water, of course, but they don't actually need like a lot of swimming water like I kind of want them to have. So there's a little bit more space, whoops, a little bit more space for them to walk. Let's see if that helps at all. Well, I boxed and unboxed them. Um... Did that help? Oh, it's calculating. Oh, we're just gonna calculate indefinitely. Let's see. I mean, it's it's okay. Um, maybe we take one of the females and we put one of the females in the trade center. Let's see if that helps. Having only three of them. Maybe having four of them was a bit overzealous. Can you get off of this and have your thing, like, calculate, please? 263. And there we go. Okay, space is okay. When we have babies, it's going to be another story. But that is a problem for future Savannah. And guests think tickets are underpriced. Great. Can you escape? Wow, look at the crowd we drew. Like, all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> they can escape right there because I didn't actually connect up the fence. That is a problem. Um... Yeah, let me do this custom. I was gonna do it the I was gonna do it the lazy way, but I won't. I'll do it the right way. That's the wrong rod. We'll do it this way, and we'll bring this in to match meet the building rather. There we go. Perfect. And then if we go over here and get rid of this, and we just grab one of these pieces. The bigger one fit? Yeah, it will because inside here is not gonna be shown. So I really don't care if it clips through that, but we'll do this. And I love, by the way, I love that these mesh thingies are not climbable. Um, it makes my life a lot easier, even though it's really unrealistic. These guys would definitely be able to climb right up out and over that. Um, but I love that they're not climbable because <laughs> it allows me to uh, go slow on my building like this. So let's grab Taiga and Temperate and Asia foliage is what they like. I am gonna stick with our palette as much as we can, but I always kind of like to try to integrate some of the stuff that they like. I do wanna put, this is like my favorite tree to, um, to use. And one of my favorite things to do is actually to make it falling in the water. I don't know why, uh, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. So let's actually just, we'll make it look like it's part of this kind of climbing structure. We'll tilt it down just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. And then we need some greenery. This is my favorite tree, this ash tree. Favorite tree, but I don't think that's definitely not going to fit because I'm not wanting to make this that tall. So kind of a bummer. I don't even really want to make it that tall either. And it's also temperate foliage. I'm trying to stick with Taiga. So let's look at Taiga real quick just so we, we, yeah, I guess, I guess we can use these because these are a little bit more believable in my mind that they would grow through the top of something. Um, because they're a little bit more sparse. So if they're growing through the top of some, um, chain link, I think that's a little bit more believable. Let's see, we can bend this up and this can actually be like three, three trees in the back of there. Maybe a little bit taller, a little bit more forward. Kind of wanting it. There we go. I kind of wanted them to kind of surround this elbow, elbow area elbow area of the climbing structure and let's grab another one and I want this one to kind of be falling a little bit um and oh you know what idea we can make this one falling like this and then we can take um there's a Y piece for the climbing like this and we can make it look like the zoo 
like propped it up, right? Like it fell over, but they were like, no, the monkeys, you know, love it. We don't want to remove the tree. Let's just prop it up with a beam. So we'll put this kind of here and we'll hold our tree up. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Let's go back to some foliage. Can't believe I haven't placed any rocks yet. Who am I? Uh, these are probably going to be what I want to use around the edges here. Some greenery. I love these ferns. They're like just the right, they're the right color. The bracken too. Is this, is this called bracken as well? No, lady fern. The bracken too um, is one of my favorites. No, I don't want to use that. That would not be realistic because if that grew up, it would not fit. It would not fit in there. Um, okay, well, we're not going to stick with the Asia region then because there's too little choices. Too little to pick from and we want it to match. We want it to match our existing palette. So we'll do that and we'll place this down. I just kind of want to get some foliage, to be honest, so that I don't have to take a really ugly thumbnail picture. <laughs> I want this to look like it's somewhat, somewhat finished-ish. Like, like effort was kind of put into this habitat. I mean, effort is being put into the habitat, but I want it to look like effort. Is Where's my palette? Here it is. Great. Grab my favorite tree. My new favorite tree, I should say. This is like the the mascot of this this park because it's going to be used literally everywhere. Um, although this is a little bit big. Where's the one that I can sink down and it doesn't show a whole lot? I think it's, yeah, it's this one. It's the smaller one. So we'll come back over here and put you right there. I also like the color on this one because it's just just perfect. It's just perfect. Let's see. Is there a way that you're not clipping so bad? There we go. Okay, you guys. I mean, as a start of a habitat, I don't think it's that bad. I really don't. Oh, you know what? We should actually pretend this is a real zoo game and um, put things in like that the animals need in order to survive. What am I doing? Japanese. A cack over here. Perfect. That way they actually have, oh, I forgot about this. Dang it, that's a little too big for this habitat. Oh well, oh well, we'll put this over on that side right there. This is all food enrichment. Um, let's put this, if it'll fit right over here. It's gonna flatten a whole bunch of terrain. Be really annoying. Okay, there you go. So there's two foods and now we need some toys. Let's give them, everybody needs a rubber ducky. And apparently it's a red rubber ducky. So we'll do red rubber ducky and then a ball. We'll put a ball over here. Perfect. The rubber ducky floats, right? Yeah, perfect. There we go. And then we also need somewhere for them to get fed. That's the large one. We want the small one. Mm, I'll put it over here. Oh, maybe I won't put it over here for now. Wow. Did the hitboxes for the barriers get, like, giant for some reason? Maybe we'll put it off the back of here and we'll make it... We'll make it, like, like standing. I mean, the well, the train just rose, so I was going to say we would give it some legs and make it, like, a little table. But that is good for now. And then, wow, they have water. <laughs> they have water. I don't have to place it down. Um, so there we go, you guys. Oh, no. You know what I didn't check? Please, please, please don't be shy around guests. Oh, thank the Lord. They're confident. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe I didn't check that until just now. I'm so bad. I'm so bad at remembering to check things. Okay, you guys. So in this episode, we have gotten started on our Japanese macaque habitat. Um, we talked about option one, option two. Please do let me know what you think. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Leave it at this and uh, wait for your guys' responses to see what you think and how we're doing. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of real time building with me. I do certainly enjoy doing it uh, every now and then. Next time we'll do a time lapse. We'll finish this up. 
and we'll go from there. Uh, so yeah, if you did enjoy, please do leave a like. It does help me out on the channel. I greatly do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, just to keep up with any future content. And, uh, and yeah, as we take a look at our cute little monkeys, look at his little face. <laughs> as we take a look at our cute little monkeys here, um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.